Okay, so these notes, again, to, to repeat, we're going to be starting with, um, you should have your notebooks out. Yes. And we're going to start with 9-1 uh, started on page 59, and it went up through glycolysis. It stopped it there at glycolysis. Then 61 talked about there are two types of fermentation. And then 63 is going to follow up with what happens if we have um, oxygen present. Okay, so shh. first of all, when we say food serves as our raw material, the ultimate source of energy is, on our planet is what? The sun. This was a question that was on your photosynthesis leaf disc lab that threw a lot of you kind of for a, for a loop. You had the question about, um, explain how the, the sun is the ultimate source of energy. Well, yes, it provides energy for the plants, so plants can do photosynthesis. But does the sun directly provide us with energy? No. 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 So how do we get the energy from the sun? Mm-hmm. By eating plants that got their energy the sun, from the sun or by uh, eating other animals. Okay, you guys, phones should be away. You don't need your phones out right now. They're just a distraction to you. So the food that we eat provides our cells with the raw materials. Does a plant eat? No, it absorbs. Hmm. In a way it eats. In a way it eats, okay. So as an organism, as a whole, it's not eating. But how about the cells? Do the cells have to eat? Do the cells have to take in nutrition? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I still don't feel like I have 100% of you with me. Okay. So as an organism, you wouldn't say, you know, that a, because a plant is an autotroph, it makes its own food. But when it, that, just think of that phrase. It makes its own food. So what is the food that an autotroph makes? Energy and glucose. It makes glucose. Where is the energy held in a glucose molecule? Glycosis. Where is the energy contained? Mitochondria. Aye, okay, let's go back. ATP. Okay, I'm saying in a glucose molecule, in a molecule of sugar, where is the energy stored in that molecule? In the, I heard it, in the chemical bonds. And so in order to get that energy out, we have to break down the food. And that's what cellular respiration is all about. So both plant and animal cells have to do this process. And this process is going to be occurring in the mitochondria. So that's why both plant and animal cells. So plant cells, yes, are going to make their own food, but then they have to do something with that food, right? They have to be able to break it down. They have to get the energy out of the food by breaking the chemical molecules. We can measure how much energy is in a molecule in a unit called a calorie. And I think I talked to you guys last week about calories. These are little calories. But what we see on a food label is actually a kilocalorie. A thousand of these little calories is a kilocalorie. So I don't want you to forget that energy is stored in the chemical bonds. Don't forget that. So we aren't actually lighting our glucose on fire and burning it up. We're actually breaking it down and breaking the chemical bonds. And so this first step of cellular respiration is this process called glycolysis. And this releases a very small amount of energy. Eventually, when we do cellular respiration, what kind of, we're, we're breaking down glucose, what kind of molecule are we making? Um, what molecule do we hope to make at, as an end result of, glu- of glycolysis, of cellular respiration? Can we write down the whole equation? What's the equation for cellular respiration? O2. How much O2? Six O2. Six O2. 
Yields. Energy. Okay, energy. What else? Light. Light. Do we glow? <laughs> okay, we don't. We don't. We don't give off sunlight. Okay, so the energy that. So this energy does. There is heat. But this energy is also used to do something else. We'll get back to that in a second. Okay, so energy, yes, but then what do we exhale? Carbon dioxide, and this also releases water. We've said over and over again that the equation for cellular respiration is almost exactly like photosynthesis, just running in the opposite direction. So sunlight energy comes in. I, I need your all your focus. You guys have a test on Friday. I know what's on the test. I'm directly re reviewing stuff that I know is on the test. Okay, so in photosynthesis, yes, it's sunlight energy coming in. Here, this energy is used to make ATP. And the ATP is what gets used to do work inside of the cell. Yes. This all has to start off with taking this glucose molecule and doing this first step, which is glycolysis. So in this first step called glycolysis, what are we doing? Well, we are first taking glucose and breaking it down into something called pyruvic acid. So glycolysis is taking a glucose molecule down, you take one glucose and you make two of these molecules called pyruvic acid. That's glycolysis. Notice this is happening outside of the mitochondrion. So we'll call this step number one. Step number two, is the Krebs cycle, and step number three is the electron transport chain. Now, this diagram is basically what you're going to be putting on a page. Um, it's a left-hand page. Uh, what page is It's This is the figure from page 222. Uh, that is on page 62. 62? Okay, so look at page 62 in your notebook. You could actually start drawing this on page 62. Page 60 has a Venn diagram of the two types of fermentation, I think. So we'll draw this diagram together. Okay, this is page 62 in your notebook. This is also on your diagram, in your textbook, is um, on page 222. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide up the cytoplasm from the mitochondria. And the mitochondria has kind of like an inner folded membrane, right? It's got two layers on the outside. It's double layered membrane and then it's got an inner folded membrane. Kind of like the uh, chloroplast has two membranes. So your first step is to take in a molecule of glucose. And you first take that glucose and turn it into pyruvic acid. What's this process called? Um, glycolysis. glycolysis. Okay. Glycolysis does not require any oxygen. And no matter what happens next, cellular respiration, all, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic, is always going to start off with glycolysis. Now, if oxygen is present, the pyruvic acid enters into the mitochondria and starts into something called the Krebs cycle. And we make it circular because a cycle doesn't really have a beginning and an end.
The Krebs cycle is also known as the citric acid cycle. And the products of the Krebs cycle go into the last part called the electron transport chain. I made that all ugly now, sorry. So you have to have oxygen, okay? You must have oxygen to do this. What happens if you don't have oxygen? Can you do Krebs cycle on the electron transport chain? No. If you don't have oxygen, you start with glycolysis. You make pyruvic acid. But then, depending upon what kind of organism you are, you'll do one of two things. If you're a cell, a muscle cell, like we experienced in lab on Friday, what happens? What do you do? You get so Okay, what's that, what's that pathway called? It's a type of fermentation. What kind of fermentation is it? Did you get did you get tipsy in here on Friday when you did the <laughs> Tips I know you missed it. You missed it. I'll I'll tell you right now, you didn't get tipsy. What is it called? Lactic acid. There we go. We made lactic acid. But if you're a yeast cell, you do alcoholic fermentation. So yeah, no, no matter how much you go to, go to the gym and work out on the stair climber, you're not going to get tipsy because your muscle cells don't do alcoholic fermentation. They do lactic acid fermentation. If our muscle cells did alcoholic fermentation, I think the gym would be like the happening place, right? Everybody would be there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Shh. Come back. Come back. Yeah. Um, well, what your coach is trying to do is stimulate you to create what's called slow twitch muscles, the muscles that fatigue more slowly. Uh, so he's building up endurance. So no matter how much you do something, you'll never have infinite endurance, right? Exactly. Oh, man. You can improve your endurance, right? <laughs> okay, so this is with no oxygen, okay? No oxygen. Now, the cool part is, is that when your muscles build up lactic acid and you get tired and fatigued, you don't stay that way forever because your cells repay the oxygen debt. And this lactic acid gets reconverted back into pyruvic acid, and then guess what you do? When you have oxygen, so when you now have oxygen, then you do the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain inside of the mitochondria. Okay, so your body has a way to reclaim and get most of its energy out. Yes? What happens if you never regain oxygen? You die. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why? Because, look, the, you guys, this is why we have to breathe. This is literally why you have to have oxygen and you die if you don't breathe, if you don't get oxygen. Because your cells cannot make enough ATP to do all of the functions that keep them alive. 
And so if you're not getting oxygen, you shut down the electron transport chain and your cell limps along for a little while doing lactic acid fermentation. But after a little while, after about six minute, minutes without oxygen, cells begin to die. Okay, that was a good question. Six whole minutes? Six whole minutes and you have permanent damage to the nerves and the neurons in your brain. Oh, that's not good. So that's why, you know, if you find somebody who's, you know, sunk down to the bottom of the deep end of the pool and you got to get them out of the water, you got to get the water out of their lungs and stimulate them to start breathing again. Because maybe they've been there for four minutes. They haven't done irreparable brain damage yet. But if you don't do anything, that damage is going to be permanent. Yes? So I sometimes do this thing when I'm swimming. I let all the air out of my lungs, and I kind of just sit at the bottom of the pool for like a minute. Yeah? Uh, what would happen to my body if I, like, if that, like, what's happening in my body? Your body is using up all of the oxygen that it already has in your bloodstream. But pretty soon you get the an overwhelming urge to go to the surface, right? Because your blood chemistry is changing and that's sending a signal, I need to breathe, I need to breathe. Why do people drown? Well, pretty soon you get that overwhelming urge, I need to breathe, and you hold your breath as long as you can until you pass out. And then once you pass out, you begin breathing. What do you breathe in? Lung full of water. Okay, so remember that this pathway here from pyruvic acid here to either lactic acid fermentation or alcohol is ha happening with no oxygen. That's what I just drew for you. We would like to be able to do this pathway, the one with oxygen. You must have oxygen. How much ATP do we generate when we do this? Do you remember how much ATP we get from glycolysis? Um, two. We get two ATP. <laughs> How much ATP do we get if we do the whole shebang, however? Krebs cycle on the electron transport chain. Four. Mm -hmm. well, a lot more than four. Six. 30 what? 36 ATP. <laughs> if we just go and do this, we only make another two ATP. So we only make a little bit of ATP energy to do cell work. Your cells, our cells in our body cannot manage with lactic acid fermentation permanently. We have to cycle and do aerobic respiration to make the maximum. Okay? So now you're almost done with your diagram on that page, aren't you? Yes. Remember, it's a DLCE, so you still have some work to do on it. Let's look at this and let's see if we can add some more detail. Okay, so there are products that come out of each step of this process. Remember the light and dark reactions for photosynthesis? There were things that came out of each process. There are things that come out of each of these processes as well. So we have this uh, NADH. We've heard of NADH before. Yes. NADH gives us a source of electrons. We also have a new substance, an electron carrier, FADH2. Okay, I'm going to go back and pause for a second while you guys add in those arrows. I can't think of any questions on your test that ask you directly how many ATP you get exactly from each part, but... I think that you understand that glycolysis gives you a very small amount of ATP compared to how much you get as a result of doing the electron transport chain. That that's what you want to do is the electron transport chain. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, moving on. So... We get the energy out of the food that we eat by breaking it down to glucose molecules in the presence of oxygen and allowing us to, I know it's ugly, huh? My ankle, I don't have my brace on today. I'm sorry. It's, it's really swollen today. Um, that's purple. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's uh, Yeah, you know what, you guys, yesterday was four months since I broke my ankle, so. Okay. All right, so, shh. So my question for you here is, does this equation look familiar? Where have you seen this equation before? It's well, this is the equation for cellular respiration. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. You've seen this equation before in photosynthesis. So this is just kind of recapping everything that I've said so far, that glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm, followed by electron transport chain, Krebs cycle, and then the electron transport chain happening inside of the mitochondria. What's the nickname for the mitochondria? The I wore my special shirt today. You just now are realizing. No, I actually saw this today. Okay. So we call the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell because that's where we're generating this ATP. All right. You guys, I'm recording. Hello. It's going to go up on YouTube and everyone's going to hear my... All right. Okay, I'm moving on. Shh. So glycolysis, we're spending a lot of time on it, but we're taking glycolysis and breaking it down into two molecules of pyruvic acid. Okay, so glucose has six carbons in it. It takes two ATP to get this process started. And we end up making two molecules of pyruvic acid. Each of those have only three carbons in them. So we get a net gain of two ATP. And we make something called NAD. Okay, and the NAD picks up those hydrogens, those electrons. It's an electron acceptor. So we make two ATP and two NADHs. What happens to those? Those NADHs are eventually going to end up going to the electron transport chain, okay? Why is glycolysis an advantageous process? It happens really, really quickly. We can quickly generate some ATP, and it doesn't have anything to do with oxygen. So glycolysis is important. We've talked already a lot about fermentation, so I'm going to go through this so fast. I'm just going to click through these. And if you need to go back and take some more notes, then you watch this and slow it down. So now we're moving on to page 61. Okay. So when oxygen is not around, we do fermentation, releasing energy, making ATP without oxygen. There are two main types, lactic acid and alcoholic. For alcoholic fermentation, I want you to think about bread and beer. Okay. This is what we, we used yeast cells when we make bread. Has anybody in here ever made bread? Okay, excellent. So you have to take the yeast out of a little packet and you put them in some warm water with some sugar. You give them sugar because that's going to be glucose. That's going to be their food. And they're actually alive, but they're kind of in suspended animation. You have to activate them. You have to wake them up. And they start fermenting and they make this foam on top of their, their cup. You put them in a cup. And it has this real unique smell. I'll try to remember to bring some in tomorrow and I'll yeah. ferment. I'll remind okay, shh, yes. Shh. Um, actually, no, they get killed when you heat the bread, when you cook it. Is it possible to eat it before you cook it? Can you eat raw bread dough? I always do. <laughs> I always I always eat the dough, so yeah, but you have yeast living in you and on you already anyways. I'm a vegetarian, I'm not gonna eat bread no more. What? What? Okay, well good luck with that. No, a a a All right. Lactic acid, this is where um, we have ye not yeast cells, but our muscle cells are going to take in the glucose, break it down to peruvic acid, and then convert it to lactic acid. And we experienced this on Friday when we did our clothespin lab. Okay. So I'm going to go so fast through this. 
Let's see if we can answer these questions on the quiz. The raw materials required for cellular respiration are? Glucose and oxygen. Glucose and oxygen. Glucose and oxygen. Okay. Two. Okay, the net gain is two. Okay, you make two ATP. Good. All right, so that's the end of that section. Okay, shh. Okay, now, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to page 63 in our notes. 63. It's not time to go. Stay with me. 63. Shh. I don't have time. Don't ask me any questions right now. No. Okay, 63. Boys and girls, I'm recording still. This is fifth period, by the way, YouTube world. Hi. 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 And they're <laughs> and they have no self control. Okay, so we're looking at now what happens if we have oxygen. Do you remember what happens when we don't have oxygen? Yes. Okay, if you have oxygen, well, not immediately, right? You do fermentation first. Shh. So we go into the Krebs cycle. During the Krebs cycle, pyruvic acid is broken down. The carbon dioxide that we exhale is a result of the Krebs cycle. The carbon dioxide that we exhale comes from the Krebs cycle. The carbon dioxide, you guys, I've now repeated it three times. The carbon dioxide that we exhale comes from the Krebs cycle. How many of you are writing this in your notes? I don't see anybody. The carbon dioxide that we exhale comes directly from the Krebs cycle. So we're talking about pyruvic acid goes in, carbon dioxide gets exhaled, and you produce some NADH and something called coenzyme A. And it gets really complicated and I am not gonna go into all of this with you. But, okay, the Krebs cycle is not the main source of ATP. The Krebs cycle is the source of CO2 that we exhale and we get one ATP, one molecule of ATP. What is important is we get this FADH2 and NADH. That's the important stuff that we get from the Krebs cycle. Okay, the important stuff that we get from the Krebs cycle is the NADH and the FADH2. Where are those things going to go? Those things are going to go to the electron transport chain. If I write ETC, can you remember that's the electron transport chain? I will if I write it down. Okay, ETC equals electron transport chain. Okay. So why is this step important? It is not important <laughs> for making ATP. It's important for making the precursors that are gonna get you all the ATP. So you have to do Krebs cycle so that you can then go on and do the electron transfer chain. And that's where we have to have the oxygen. So all of these high energy carriers that are made by the Krebs cycle are then used in the electron transport chain to take ADP and glue on a phosphate to make ATP. And then that ATP gets sent off in the cell to do whatever the cell needs to do, whatever work it needs to do. This is a very complicated process and it's not important that we know how it all works. What I want you guys just to know, oops, 
is the end result that the NADH and the FADH2 goes in and what comes out? Water and ATP. Yes. So this is where oxygen comes in. In this very last step, look right here. This is where you have to have oxygen. You cannot do the very last step of the electron transport chain without oxygen. Okay, so this is why oxygen is necessary for your cells because this electron transport chain completely shuts down without oxygen. You can make your FADH2, you can make your NADH, you can make pyruvic acid, but you can't do anything with it if you don't have the oxygen. This is why we have to breathe. Yes. Now you guys have all heard of cyanide poison. Yes. Okay, cyanide poison is a very, very deadly poison and it kills you very quickly. Why? Because it takes away your oxygen and shuts down the electron transport chain and you die because your cells cannot make ATP. You guys, we're not out of time. Stop. Ah, uh, disappointing. Story of my life. So the totals. We get two ATP from glycolysis. Thirty-four. So a total of thirty-six all together. That's what the totals look like. When we compare photosynthesis to cellular restoration, notice the direction of this arrow for energy. Energy is going in for cellular respiration. Energy is coming out, I'm sorry, energy is going in for photosynthesis and coming out for cellular respiration. Okay, I will post this on Google Classroom for you. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, so while my loud fifth period class is still leaving the room, I want to finish this up. Um, so you see energy is coming in in our equation for photosynthesis and released as a result of, oh my God, you guys are loud and I'm recording. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, not enough to put me in the group chat. Okay. Oh, what? Yes, I'm sure. They've got a group chat and I'm not in it. Energy is released during the process of cellular respiration. This energy that comes out of photosynthesis or respiration, this energy here comes from sunlight, right? You guys remember that sunlight? And the energy comes out and it's used to make ATP. And that ATP is used to do cell work. Oh my God, it's so nice and quiet. It's crazy, fifth period is crazier than sixth period. So when I compare photosynthesis to um, cellular respiration, photosynthesis is gonna be pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And we are gonna be exhaling carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Photosynthesis releases oxygen and then we use the oxygen. So there we are dependent upon plants. Plants will be okay without us. There are other sources for carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. They don't need our carbon dioxide, but we definitely need their oxygen. Okay, so let's do this quiz really quick. The Krebs cycle breaks down pyruvic acid into carbon dioxide. What role does the Krebs cycle play in this cell? Releases energy. In eukaryotes, in eukaryotes, the electron transport chain is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. To generate energy over long periods, the body must use cellular respiration using oxygen. And which statement correctly describes photosynthesis and cellular respiration? Photosynthesis, I'm sorry, cellular respiration releases energy while photosynthesis stores energy. All right, that's the end of my lecture, um, and we will review tomorrow. Bye.